First, Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you so much for being part of this community, for watching these videos, subscribing to my channel, liking the videos, and also for all the feedback, questions, and comments that you have left for all the videos I have released this year. Many of you will know that I read every single comment and reply to every single one of them. So if you have any questions about any topic that I cover in a video, please feel free to leave me in the comments and I will answer them for you. The other thing too is that the questions that you have asked me in the comments section helps build a foundation for a future topic for a video too. For instance, if many of you are asking those questions, well, it's about time we're gonna make a video about that, right? So that's gonna be really good. If you wanna see a video, I've always said it in my past videos that you can always make a request. Most of those requests end up getting added to the queue for a future topic. It just depends on how pressing that topic is and how immediate that is. If it's not quite as immediate, I will have in the queue and it's something that we'll look down the road to just making the videos about. This being said, the holidays for 2020 and 2021 happens to fall on a Friday, which is the day that I'm releasing these videos. So Christmas falls on a Friday and also New Year falls on the Friday as well. So you're having me for New Year. What I'm gonna do for this video is talk about some of the topics that I don't think they're big enough to be their own video, but they're just little odds and end things about color management, about the new Apple M1 processor, and just things that are happening with displays and you know technologies in general. So let's dive right into it. I'm Art and, well, Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. To start us off, I want to actually talk about some stock shortage regarding BenQ displays. I know that you guys are eager to get these displays into your hand, and I'm sure that BenQ is eager to get these displays into your hands as well. The thing that I will tell you is this, patience is going to be the key going forward in early 2021, just because the stocks are going to start to come back, but it's going to take some time. I know the BenQ is ramping up production right now. Everything is going great. And for those of you that are looking at the PD3420Q, which is the display that I have here, I know in the US it has started to come out in late December already in Q1 of 2021. It's going to come out even more and it's also going to be released in other countries and territories as well. So stay tuned and just check your local BenQ website and see when that is going to be available. But it's going to come in Q1 of 2021. This being said, there are a few things about the M1 processor that we're still discovering. Now, let me set this. And I said this in my other M1 videos, which I'll leave a link down in the description and also up here too, that Apple have gone through and took a very ambitious step by making their own processor or the Apple Silicon. It is a major architecture change. Not only that, but we have compounded a major operating system change onto the processor change as well, going from a 10.15, for instance, or a 10. something to a major version release, version 11 with Big Sur. The fact that majority of the software that we have right now can run on the Rosetta 2 emulation layer this well, is just really an amazing feat of engineering. So what they have done so far is really great. The thing is that when it comes to really specific applications such as display calibrations and those kind of things, well, it's not really quite there yet, but this is to be expected because this architecture change also changes the way how the GPU functions because now it's actually using the unified memory and the way how that GPU and the signal output ID is being output to display have totally changed, which is the reason why our software doesn't work right now. But this is also something that we have seen in the past too when they have released a major operating system, for example, going from 10.14 to 10.15, for instance, sometimes our calibration software may not work properly, right? So this is pretty much something to be expected. The great thing about this whole thing that's happening right now with calibration software is that once these companies, for example, x -Rite and BenQ, get their software up to speed with Big Sur, and running on the Apple Silicon, pretty much the code base going forward will require some minor modification instead of these major modifications that they have to go through. This being said, x -Rite have come out and acknowledged already that their software doesn't work. I mean, we have figured it out for about a month now or a little bit over like six weeks since I've been testing the M1 processor that it doesn't work, but they have acknowledged that and they said that in Q1 of 2021, there is going to be a software release. So the moment that comes along, I will be making a video about it. 
Uh, the other thing I want to update you to is on BenQ, and this is regards to Palette Master Element software. BenQ is aware that the software doesn't function on the Apple Silicon right now. They are actively working on it. They haven't provided me with a time frame yet as far as when the software is going to be ready. However, based on what I feel that's going to happen is that in Q1, we're probably going to see an update to Palette Master Element that will run natively on Big Sur and the Apple Silicon in one processor. So stay tuned for that. Again, as soon as they release something like that, I'll be doing testing throughout all the BenQ displays and also providing results and some solutions for you as well with regards to what work and what may not work and settings that you should use. So just make sure you subscribe to this channel for that information. As we already found out in my previous release video, running Big Sur version 11 or 11.0.1, .1, we have a lot of issues with 4K displays that if you use native Thunderbolt connection, you're only able to run the display or USB-C for that matter, you're only able to run these 4K display at 30 Hertz, regardless of the way how you scale them. You have to scale them to equivalent of a 2K before you can really get 60 Hertz, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a 4K display. Well, the great news is that in Big Sur 11.1 .1 running on Apple Silicon, that problem has been resolved on some 4K displays. For example, BenQ PD3220U, you can now run 4K60 on there. A few things to note about these 4K displays is that the moment you update the operating system to the latest version, these 4K60 option is not going to get adopted automatically. So what you have to do is go into the operating system and just pretty much do some secret voodoos in order to get to the uh, refresh rate screen in the display setting preferences. I'll put a link to the video in the description and also up here so that you know how to change that and open that option up. Once you have that option, if your display is capable of doing 4K at 60 Hertz, you can then click on the drop down list and then choose 60 Hertz. Something to know is that some displays that are 4K right now are still not compatible with 11.1 .1 yet. So it's one of those things, again, we have to be patient. A software update is going to come from Apple that will fix these issues. It is just a matter of time. This being said, it's also probably not the best idea to return these displays that you got to the store yet, just because this is a really temporary bug and a temporary glitch that will get resolved. And as I mentioned before, running natively on HDMI or if you're running using a USB Type-C dongle to a HDMI 4K60 output, you're not going to have any of these issues. So it will circumvent that. A few more things about Apple Silicon M1, especially if you have multiple display hook up to a system. This could be, for instance, an M1 laptop with an external display or Mac Mini M1 with two external display hook up to it. When a system come back from sleep, a lot of times the resolution would get really messed up and the interface would just float in the screen with a lot of black bars around it. The best way to solve that problem is to disconnect the display and hook it back up again. That bug still persists, so hopefully that will get fixed in the next version or the next release of Big Sur. That being said, there are a few more odds and ends about M1 that we're finding out, that I'm finding out. Um, Peter Van Balen mentioned this to me and asked me a question of, am I having a problem with scaling resolution on the M1 processor? and are some scaling resolution not available. So my understanding was that it's supposed to be the same throughout, but apparently it's not. So I have been doing some testing, obviously, on a 4K display, and I found out the following. So for instance, in HDMI, if you use a native HDMI connector that is on the Apple, for example, the Mac Mini M1, you can go from 3840, which is true 4K, and the next resolution down that you can get to is 2560. There's nothing in between that you can choose. So it's kind of somewhat limiting there that you can't really choose the resolution in between. If you're running on a USB Type-C or a Thunderbolt 3, or for that matter, if you're using a USB-C dongle that can go to 4K60, you will have the option from going to 3840, which is the 44K native resolution, to 3008 pixels, which is the two step down from a scale version because technically I think there is like a three, um, 3306 pixels or something like that too that is an option in between that's no longer available on these systems. So for some reason you can't access them in 11.1, .1, especially on the Mac Mini M1. And I'm sure that a lot of people are seeing this issue as well. Again, hopefully these weird resolution glitches and the fact that you can't scale them normally as you can with an Intel machine would get resolved soon with the next OS releases. That said, let's shift gear and talk about BenQ. They have already released a few promotional videos for these displays that are releasing in 2021, starting with the SW271C. 
This is supposed to be the update to the SW271, which is their 27-inch 4K hardware calibrated display. Based on the promo video, it doesn't really say much, but from what we can tell, it's going to be an amazing display. Again, you're going to get really great color accuracy because of the hardware calibration capability. Because it has a C in a name, what we're probably going to see is USB Type-C with 60 watt power delivery. BenQ have been including their uniformity technology in all the displays, their pro displays that they have been releasing, and I think that they're going to include it in this one as well. Paper color sync is going to come back and play a big role in terms of matching the colors on the display or the white point to that of a printed image. HLG support in addition to HDR10, native refresh rate support other than 60 Hertz. And also this display, the 3D LUT is going to be open to third party hardware calibration as well, such as Calman software. So it's going to be a really amazing 27 inch 4K that I think many of you have been waiting for. So. Stay tuned to my channel when I get that display in, which hopefully will be soon. I will do an unboxing and then I'm going to do a deep dive and review that display. And then afterwards, we're going to release a whole bunch of videos comparing that display to the current SW271 and many other SW display as well. This way you can make the best decision in choosing the SW lineup that fits best into your workflow. And shifting gear one more time, we're going to talk about BenQ Pro Designers or the PD line. They have already released a video on this. This is the PD2725U. I believe this is supposed to be an update to the PD2720U. And a few things that they have included in this display is going to be their new uniformity technology. And this display is going to retain the Thunderbolt connection technology with daisy chaining capability, very similar to the 2720U that comes before it and it's going to be a 4K display. Beyond that, the information is really scarce right now, but hopefully when I get that display in, I'll be able to do a more thorough review and give you some more feedback on that. And lastly, what I wanna do is share with you the direction where this channel is going to go in 2021. We're not stopping, as I mentioned earlier, this is full steam ahead, but I feel that we have done a really great job building a database of content for color management already that you guys can go through my archive on the channel and really watch those content to find out how you do color management. I think the thing that I want to really move the channel towards is more of just the back end computing portion of it, where, for example, we'll talk about hard drive, data backup, how to do that, what's the best practice in doing so, talk about drives in general, and also infuse in a lot more photography tips here and there. So depending on what we do, uh, we're going to see, but we're going to infuse more variety of content into this channel. So I like you to stay tuned to that. And this is going to be really fun. The other thing what we're going to do too, is that I want to introduce a full comprehensive tutorial on Lightroom and make it available just to you guys on this community. What I really wanted to do was to break it down into seasons and episode where each episode is about maybe five to 10 minutes or so. And you could just watch what you want to watch and then pretty much just move on and get what you need done. Truth be told, I have already filmed those content in late 2019 and early 2020. I never edit them and I actually have filmed them multiple times. I just never found the inspiration to really edit them or release them out. But I think that this is going to be the year. So if you want to see a comprehensive tutorial on Lightroom, Photoshop, those kind of things, leave them in the comment section below and I'll, you know, that will be my inspiration to release these videos to you. As far as release schedule for the video, I'm going to keep the Monday, Friday for the time being. Whether the Lightroom and those tutorial content will fit into the Monday, Friday schedule, or will there be another separate day that these things get released exclusively? I haven't determined that yet, so that is yet to be seen, but we're going full steam ahead and we're definitely not stopping. So, and that means for all of you as well, if you have any comments, do leave them in the comment section of my video, because as I mentioned before, I answer all of my comments. And for those of you that ask questions, you will know that I always chime in on them. So anyway, happy new year, 2021. This is going to be a fantastic year. And this is a year that we're really going to move forward. And hopefully we'll get a lot of new technologies this year too, that haven't been announced from these companies yet. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm really looking forward to them. Again, have any questions? Leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new contents, very similar to this one and the contents I've done in the past. And until next time, artist right. <laughs>